Horror movies have one very simple job, to scare you. Some succeed while others fall short, however there are some out there that have some of the most terrifying and disturbing scenes in cinema that will leave you shaking way into the credits. So today on Top 10 Beyond the Screen I'm going to be counting down our list of the top 10 terrifying movie endings that will keep you up tonight. Let's jump in. Coming in at 10, Salo, 1975. Now this film is tough to swallow, I should make that clear before we proceed. Salo, released in 1975, follows a group of fascists who round up 9 adolescent boys and girls and subject them to 120 days of physical, mental and sexual torture. Yeah. I told you it's rough. Now, Salo may not be a horror in the traditional sense, but the acts committed against the teenagers in this movie are horrific enough to justify it on our list. Now, what makes this ending so chilling is watching the moral degradation four men make a teenager suffer through, which is absolutely disgusting, yet even more twisted than physical torture, and even the murder of one of the children is that we're seeing the torture take place through the binoculars of a fascist taking in the sights, sitting motionless, in silence. Just watching. In at 9, Psycho, 1960. Of course, one of the most iconic movies in cinema is on our list. Released back in 1960, Psycho follows secretary Marion Crane on the run after stealing $40,000 from her employer in order to run away with her boyfriend Sam. When she becomes overcome with exhaustion during a rainstorm, she seeks shelter at the Bates Motel, which is where she meets Norman Bates, a young man with an interest in taxidermy and has a difficult relationship with his mother. Psycho is the original originator of fear, the unassuming all American Norman Bates. A man who killed his mother, uncovered her body and adopted her as an alternate personality, which would go on to kill Marion Crane in the shower. Now the film ends with Norman in a holding cell, but all is not well. As the camera zooms in on Norman, his mother's internal voice tells the audience that she has fully taken over. Looking down at a fly that has landed on his hand, Norman's slowly lifting head and a sly smile is an iconic image alongside the iconic line, she wouldn't even hurt a fly. Before we cut to a shot of Marion Crane's sunken car and a superimposed image of his mother with eerie music to go alongside it. So spooky. In at 8, Eden Lake. 2008. Perhaps one of the scariest movies I have ever seen simply because I grew up in the UK and I've experienced people like this. Eden Lake was released in 2008 and follows a young couple on a romantic weekend at a remote lake house who become terrorized by a group of vicious delinquents. Eden Lake is extremely visceral and tough to swallow and in the final few minutes of the film the continuous pessimism comes to a crescendo as some of the parents realize their children are dead, killed out of self defense by the young couple. So the parents decide the proper course of action is to kill them. Off screen of course, just like the kids, the group of adults are savage, leaving no hope for anyone's future. Coming in at 7, The Shining 1980. Directed by Stanley Kubrick all the way back in 1980, The Shining follows Jack Torrance who becomes the winter caretaker at the isolated Overlook Hotel in Colorado in hopes of curing his writer's block. He settles in alongside his wife Wendy and his son Danny who is plagued by psychic premonitions. As Jack's writing goes nowhere and Danny's visions become more disturbing, Jack discovers the hotel's dark secrets and begins to unravel into a homicidal maniac, hell bent on terrorizing his family. The Shining is one of the best sneak peeks at one man's spiral into madness, as we experience rivers of blood and visions of evil twins. So how does it end? Well, now on the run from his father in a maze outside the hotel, Danny manages to get away, leaving Jack Torrance to freeze to death in the snow. Then we see a photograph showing Jack at a party in the hotel's lounge, a photo that is dated 1921. Impossible, or is it? Is Jack an eternal prisoner of the Overlook Hotel? In at 6, Saw 2004. I never thought I would include a Saw film on our list, but here we are. The very first Saw movie released in 2004 is actually an expertly played out horror movie. It follows photographer Adam Stanhai and oncologist Lawrence Gordon who regain consciousness while chained to pipes at either end of a filthy bathroom. As the two men realize they've been trapped by a sadistic killer named Jigsaw and must complete his puzzle in order to survive his perverse game. The game is, one of them must kill the other or they'll both bite the dust. 
fun. Now although the sequels are gory, this one is much more downplayed and more of a psychological thriller than anything. However the ending is something to behold. Lawrence ends up soaring off his own foot with a hacksaw to escape the chains, then shoots Adam in a bit to escape. Adam however survives and after Lawrence escapes, the corpse that has been laying in the middle of the room for the entirety of the movie rises from the floor and reveals himself to be Jigsaw. He then locks Adam in the bathroom telling him, it's game over. Sucks to be Adam. In at 5, The Wicker Man 1973. This 1973 horror follows Sergeant Howie who arrives on the small Scottish island of Summer Isle to investigate the report of a missing child. A conservative Christian, the policeman observes the residents frivolous sexual displays and strange pagan rituals, particularly the temptations of Willow, the daughter of the island's magistrate. The more Howie learns about the islander's strange practices, the closer he gets to tracking down the missing child. Now it is at the end of this chilling movie that Howie he discovers that the missing girl isn't the sacrifice of the group of pagans after all, it's him. He is then bundled into a giant wicker man statue and set on fire, screaming in horror and praying to god as the cults sing an eerie folk song. Coming in at 4, The Others 2001. One of my personal favourite horror movies as well as my personal favourite horror movie twist, The Others was released back in 2001 and follows Grace, the devoutly religious mother of Anne and Nicholas, who moves her family to the English coast during World War II. She awaits word on her missing husband while protecting her children from a rare disease to the light. On top of this Anne claims she can see ghosts, and Grace initially believes the new servants are playing tricks on her, but chilling events make her believe something supernatural is at play. Effectively directed by Alejandro Amanaba, this candle lit chiller manages to pack a huge punch, especially towards the end of the movie. Throughout we have been tormented by noises, sighting, swinging doors and opening curtains, but nothing is more unsettling than a young Anne on the floor in her dress, only to discover it's not Anne. The ending of the movie is what truly screwed me up though, spoilers ahead. Everyone's dead. That's right, Grace, Anne and Nicholas are the ghosts, and the voices and noises they have been hearing are that of the living. The brutal truth about Grace, she lost her mind, smothered her children, then turned the gun on herself. Yeah, bleak as Coming in at 3, Night of the Living Dead 1968. In 1968 we were blessed with this nightmarish horror thanks to the legendary George A. Romero, Night of the Living Dead. In this film the dead come back to life and eat the living. Several people barricade themselves inside a rural house in an attempt to survive the night. However, outside are hordes of relentless shambling zombies who can only be killed by a blow to the head. Pretty straightforward zombie business if you ask me. However, this film is absolutely terrifying and still holds up even for the 60s. Now, more importantly, Night of the Living Dead serves as a commentary on the war in Vietnam and as a deconstruction of American media. Yeah, I mean, it's okay if you missed it in the movie, I definitely did. However, this is clear when the ending rolls around. After a horrible night of fending off zombies, the sole survivor Ben awakens to a bleak reality. When a group of gun toting townsfolk pass by the house, they mistake him for a zombie and shoot him dead. This image was way too close for comfort for some Americans, considering Ben was a strong black leader, and the final image of him laying dead with a group of white men dragging his body out for burning is something that will remain with you forever. Coming in at number 2, The Thing 1982. In this 1982 horror directed by John Carpenter and located in remote Antarctica, a group of American research scientists are disturbed at their base camp by a helicopter shooting at a sled dog. However, when they take in the dog, it brutally attacks both human beings and canines in the camp, and they discover that the beast can assume the shape of its victims. Now few may know that The Thing is actually a remake of a 50s classic sci-fi film called The Thing from Another World. The Thing stars Kurt Russell as the team's helicopter pilot RJ McCready. The group at the camp are overcome by paranoia and conflict as they quickly learn that they can no longer trust each other because any one of them could quite literally be The Thing. So how does it end? Well McCready blows up the compound in a bid to destroy The Thing, only to see another character, Childs, reappear out of nowhere. As the pair's campfire burns out, the bleak finale implies to us that the alien has found a new host in Childs. And if not, they'll both freeze to death. Sucks either way. And finally, coming in at number one, The Mist, 2007. Frank Darabont's adaptation of Stephen King's chilling novel, The Mist, is something truly terrifying to behold. After a powerful storm hits Maine, David Drayton is forced to seek shelter in a grocery store with fellow residents as a thick fog rolls in and engulfs the town. Worse still, a deadly creature is lurking within the fog, and it's hungry. This adaptation is both brilliant and terrifying in the sense that absolutely no one, and I mean no one, saw that ending coming. The ending upset a lot of 
people, but not because it was bad or ineffective, but simply because it was so damn powerful. The entire film follows a group of strangers coming together to survive an attack by a Lovecraftian creature that is hell bent on devouring the town and its occupants. Now here's the kick, by the end of the movie the residents of the town decide they would rather kill themselves than be torn apart by the beast, and that's what happens. David Drayton turns the gun on his son, kills him, then turns the gun on himself, but guess what, he's out of bullets. And then guess what? The cavalry is arriving to save the town. The father had waited just mere seconds as the mist began to clear and the military rolled in. His son would never have had to die. Essentially, he killed his son for nothing. Sucks to be him. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any scary movie endings that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below. If you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another Beyond the Screen vid. And until next time, see you later.